Briefed by the FBI, Florida's governor confirmed that Russian hackers gained access to voter databases in two Florida counties before the presidential election in 2016. Governor DeSantis would not say which counties, but he did say the hackers did not manipulate any data and the election results were not compromised. Apparently, the hackers gained access through a spear phishing email after a worker clicked a link. This is not the first time a hack has been acknowledged. Republican U.S. Senator Marco Rubio said in the past at least one Florida county had an intrusion. Senator Bill Nelson also reported the hack, though it was negated by then-Governor, now-Senator Rick Scott. Special Counsel Robert Mueller's report on Russian interference in the 2016 election also indicated hackers gained access to the network of at least one Florida county. So what are the implications? I'm joined by News for Jack's political analyst and head of the JU Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. And I guess the biggest question here, Rick, is does this erode public trust in our elections process? Well, so far not so much because there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is the clear statement by the governor and by the FBI that this did not affect vote totals. It also did not affect the process. The bad news is not only did they intrude into the databases here in Florida, at least 20 other states had that intrusion. Remember, this was a comprehensive interference attempt by the Russians. Social media, the hacking of the DNC, and the intrusion into these databases to 20 different states. So at some point, we're gonna ha we have to make sure that there's integrity in the count. I think most of the public believes in the integrity of the, of the counting total, but hard to measure the impact of some of the social media campaign and the other pieces of this. Bruce, with an, another election right around the corner, 2020, Clearly, this is a shot across the bow, and we have to be prepared for the future. I don't want to sound conspiratorial here. As far as we know, it didn't impact the election outcome. Ian Scone, who was the election county supervisor in Leon and was also in charge of state elections for a time, said, whoa, I think we're a little bit premature, and I think there needs to be more of an investigation. Well, clearly it does. But remember in Florida, too, fortunately, we have a paper trail. Paper ballots is a backup. If we ever had to go to the audit, we could certainly verify the accuracy of the count. But the issue is bigger than just the accuracy of the count. Remember, in the Mueller report, volume one, very detailed as to what that, what that interference was. 29 indictments, 26 of Russian individuals, three Russian organizations, all detailing the comprehensive effort. The social media campaign was broad waging, ranging. How do you measure that result? And the, the hacking of the DNC, and now the intrusion into the databases. As he said in Leon County, did it affect vote totals? So far the FBI says no, but certainly we're gonna to have to look into it further and be prepared for next year. And I think the broader issue here is we can't ignore the fact that Russian President Vladimir Putin is waging a war here on the democratic process. It's not the kind of war that we usually think of with weapons, but what he's trying to do is divide the American electorate, create dissension, and create uh, j just a, a debate among the American people that is very negative. Bruce, make no mistake about it, we should be very clear-eyed when it comes to Russia. They are on the other side of us when it comes to Venezuela. They're on the other side in Iran. They're on the other side in Syria. They're on the other side when it comes to North Korea. They are the other side. They are not our friend. And I think the last three administrations, President Bush, President Obama, and now President Trump, have all had some wishful thinking and hoping they could improve relationships with Russia. We should be very clear-eyed. As you've just stated, this is a, a, a war, a technology war. By the way, the intent to influence our elections isn't new. Russia tried to do that back in 1964 with mm -hmm. Barry Goldwater. What's changed is technology. What's changed is social media. What's changed is cybersecurity and their ability to the do weaponry. it. The weaponry. The weaponry. And they are utilizing that weaponry. They are sophisticated. They're smart. They're not going to stop. Wishful thinking might make, won't make it go away. So we need to be prepared, and we need to have an appropriate response. I, uh, the, the producer's telling me to wrap. I do have to ask you one more question. The governor signed a nondisclosure law. He will not say which two counties. There's a very strict public records law here in Florida. Why would he do that? Because this is going to be a point of contention. National security. Clear public records law under Chapter 119 of the Florida statutes, but exceptions are built in for security and for, and for national security purposes. I think the governor's on firm grid, uh, ground legally, but clearly he needs to do that to protect the integrity of what the FBI's investigation and for national security purposes. More to be written on this. Rick Mullaney, always a pleasure. Appreciate it.